All right, now we previously heard of allegations of the existence of a Zuma faction and a Ramaphosa faction, and of course later an NDZ and Ramaphosa faction. But what do these alleged factions mean in the face of the public for a ruling party? Well, joining us to chat a little bit more about this is author and political analyst Sanusha Naidu. Sanusha, very good morning. Thank you very much for joining us here on Weekend Dawn. I mean, just on the back of what uh, Transport Minister Fagina Balula was alluding to, perhaps also the recent developments about the uh, marches for the hands of Mahashule that came about. Uh, there was the march to state capture, also the recusing of uh, or asking of the recusing of uh, Deputy Chief Justice uh, Raymond Zondo. We've also got the march of the MKMVA, ultimately against Transport Minister Fikir Lambalula. So looking at the recent uh, unfoldings that has uh, transpired in the political arena for the African National Congress, I mean, it obviously is a costly affair, but beyond that, it seems to be marches against the uh, very party members that are supposedly supposed to be under one umbrella. Looking at what is currently transpiring and the deepening, um, you know, the faction, the deepening, um, the, the factions that are deepening as the days continue, what is ultimately being unearthed as we speak? Good morning and, and, and thank you for inviting me to be on the show. I think you basically covered the nuance of what's happening here. When a party starts turning on each other, when you start seeing that this party essentially is having marches or marches that I said that that quintessentially start talking about what is wrong, not necessarily wrong, but what uh, becomes a extremely uh, uh, extremely acute and chronic fight within the within a political organization for resources for power, for control, then you know how delegitimating this party has become. The delegitimization of this party is not just about the fact that they're not performing at the polls in terms of the election results outcomes from 2019 or what we may anticipate in 2021 at the local government election, but it also tells you, it sends a signal, or not even a signal now, it's just out there in your face to say that, they have become almost a delegitimizing process in itself. And that, in, that, that contextual analysis tells me, you, and even you know, ordinary people on the street, is that this party is not just about you know, a lack of governance, a lack of leadership. This party is basically hemorrhaging very fast. And you're right, and you're right to raise the point about when you start marching on yourself, you're actually marching against the very values, principles, norms, the very kind of... Um, objectives and goals that you set out for yourself. So you have to, I, I ask myself, I mean, I don't even go that far to say it's the public because I don't know how much the public is request uh, is questioning this. All I'm saying about the public is the trust deficit has shut out, the, uh, shut out the roof. But for me, when I see this happening and I ask myself, well, what what, is, what, is, what do all of these documents mean to you? Because see, clearly it doesn't have any kind of coherence. It has no kind of uh, center. It has no kind of cohesion because it seems to me that the rhetoric that you kind of subscribe to does not really make any difference to your behavior of what's going on. And look, listening to the minister respond to the, uh, the, the march by the MK vets and to the spokesperson and then asking the question about what does this individual do except, of course, organize marches, also then needs to be interrogated because within the Thule House, it tells me that there is a serious deficit of who knows what is happening, and there's a de serious deficit of basically trust, and there's a serious deficit that each and every one of those factions that you talk about operate in such silos that it has become almost a, a, a parallel state within itself. Now, Sanusha, let's get into those dynamics and actually look at the factions that exist. Um, we're looking at the uh, factions of radical eco economic transformation versus the CR camp. And we're also looking at perhaps the balance of power between those two factions, particularly since elections last year, and how it's also swayed the dynamics within the party. I mean, with the, um, you know, the Zuma faction perhaps also having an integral um, part in, in perhaps some of the decision-making uh, decision um, uh, forums within the ANC itself. I mean, how do those dynamics play out on this arena as we head into the uh, national conference elections also in 2022? 
I think uh, the stakes are very high at this point and that every opportunity to basically put one more kind of jab into the opposition or into your into the uh, alternate faction or into the struggle against containing maintaining and retaining your power base and every every bit counts in terms of how you go about doing this i think that is what the modus operandi of these factions are the 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 the, the faction that wants to actually that's in power that's basically executive uh, even that is very very characterized by seemingly fragmentation but also the fact that certain certain resistance exists within those factions even if they sit in the executive of the NEC or the NWC or wherever the executive how the executive is uh, organized I think to me again it's about this kind of last hundred meter sprint for whatever it is to capture the control within this party. There are those that are kind to retain the control, to re re-engineer some of these part, some of these dynamics in the party to create a cohesion, a cohesiveness, a kind of center in the party that has authority. But that's the ultimate issue of this party. It has no center that can control what's happening. And so you have a kind of free for all going on where when you start attacking each other, when you can go and you can mark on your own political headquarters that in itself tells you how much of a center that does not exist and so i think this is where the stakes have become very high i think the parallel processes around the corruption the high the 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 the, the, the seizure of assets the kind of role that hawks is playing in trying to go forward with the super agency of the siu uh, we saw what happened with bandilia masuko where he was basically asked to relieve his position because the siu report recommendations there's a there's a pushback against that we even saw that there were those that were supposed to step aside after the president made the press briefing announcement following the NEC meeting previously and there was a pushback against that so it seems to me that the stakes have become so veritably high that any attempt to basically sit back on your laurels will be seen as giving away some some kind of leverage in the party some kind of uh, political power and therefore this is where we are now and for 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 many south africans out there i think where they are start for leadership and they're looking for some kind of direction of leadership it's not excuse me it's not coming from the party it's not coming from when you look at these kinds of fights that are taking place and i will be very curious to see what happens internally in terms of the test of this integrity commission the test of what's happening it with sanction committees in the party and how are they going to deal with these different dynamics particularly some of the some of the accusations that the minister transport minister made about the spokesperson of the of the MK vet saying that he's not sure what he does i mean you know in a subtle way what the transport minister also did there was he says he sits in the sd office now we know that that is a very contentious uh, office we know that the head of that um, office is is a contentious figure there's been lots of allegations around his involvement in particular issues around state capture tender processes but again there's this dynamic in the party about how far will it go to really re re reengineer the fact that this party is not I, I don't think we can say it's 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 uh, fragmenting anymore. I think it's already moved beyond fragmentation. So Nisha, we, we are going to run out of time. I want to conclude perhaps just quickly. You spoke about a trust deficit. You, you spoke about retaining a power base. And I'm just looking at perhaps how as the, uh, you know, the worst the ANC does in terms of its perceptions and, and obviously what's being alluded to in terms of the reports coming through from the SIU amongst many of the other issues. I mean, the more um, room there is perhaps to also unseat President Sol Ramaphosa. But if we look at the different factions that exist and also their approaches to government, how is this ultimately going to affect the country, the ordinary citizens at large? I think to a large extent, people have already moved. I think in their minds, people have moved. Uh, I don't know if it's going to affect that more than whatever. I think where the, the impact will come 
uh, is that what will happen at the polls in 2021, and more importantly, what will happen to the country's economic and political governance body. That, for me, is going to be important because if indeed we see some dramatic issues, more dramatic than what we're seeing currently in the party, if there's an unseating of the president or, or any kind of shift in that space, I think that this will be more detrimental to the party and the spillover effects will, that will be the impact that this will have for the country's state, body and society. And I think for ordinary South Africans, not having maybe some semblance of leadership is going to be even more unsettling. All right. Uh, awesome political analyst, Sanusha Naidu. We're going to leave the conversation there. Thank you for joining us here on Weekend Dawn. Again, just chatting to us about the factional politics and the recent scaffolds within the ruling party.